Good afternoon, and welcome to Hand Wavy Chemistry. When I was in high school, I synthesized the chemical ethyl butanoate. Ethyl butanoate is an ester, a class of compounds known for their aroma. This one smells like pineapple and is commercially important because it is used in a lot of different artificial flavorings, particularly in orange juice. The synthesis involved the reaction of an alcohol with a carboxylic acid. And looking at the name, ethyl butanoate, we can deduce that the alcohol was ethanol and the carboxylic acid was butanoic acid. And that is what made this lab particularly memorable. Butanoic acid smells terrible. It is the smell of rancid butter of vomit. There is nothing nice about it. Now, in theory, if our reaction were to go completely to the ester, while it may have smelt unpleasant at the start, by the end we would just have lovely fruity pineapple smells. But there were two things working against us. The first, we were high school students, not that good at following directions and being careful. The second problem is that esterification reactions are reversible. They can go forwards, giving us the product we want, and they can go in reverse, giving us back our starting material. When we have a reversible reaction, eventually we end up with an equilibrium. Let me explain. The rate at which a reaction occurs depends on the concentration of the reactants. At the start of our experiment, all we have is ethanol and butanoic acid, plus a catalyst, sulfuric acid in this case. So our Ford reaction is as fast as it's going to be. As the reaction progresses and we start to form our ethyl butanoate, the rate of that forward reaction slows. Now we have some ethyl butanoate present, so it's going to start reacting to give us back ethanol and butanoic acid. Eventually, the rate of our forward reaction forming the ester will equal the rate of the reverse reaction, giving back the alcohol and carboxylic acid. When this occurs, we are at equilibrium. The concentrations of our different chemicals in the solution no longer change. Even though there are still reactions happening, the concentrations do not change. So what can we do? Because in that lab, when we got to the end and we were wafting the aroma towards ourselves, there was still definitely some butanoic acid in there. But when you buy your orange juice at the store, there is none of that present. Well, this is where Le Chatelier's principle comes in. Le Chatelier's principle says that when we have a system at equilibrium and we subject it to a stress, it will shift to oppose that stress. Now, as I discuss these stresses and the changes in equilibrium coming about from them, I'm going to use the term products to describe the desirable chemicals we want and the term reactants to refer to our undesirable starting materials. For example, if we were to add more of our reactant, the system would shift to produce more of the product. Or if we added more of the product, it would shift to form more of the reactant. If we were working in the gas phase, Increasing the pressure of the system would cause the reaction to shift towards whichever side had the least number of gaseous molecules. Small changes in temperature can also be used to shift the position of an equilibrium depending on if the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. However, you need to be careful because reaction rates are tied to temperature so if we absolutely crush the temperature down, keep it very cold, 
the reactions might just now be too slow to be usable. The final thing we could do to shift the position of an equilibrium is remove the product. So how can we use Le Chatelier's principle to maximize our yield of ethyl butanoate? Well, the easiest way is to use a large excess of ethanol. Ethanol is inexpensive and it works well as a solvent. So our stress is a large amount of reactant, which should shift our equilibrium towards the products and ideally give us ethyl butanoate in an ethanolic solution. Another option is to think about the byproducts of esterification. It's a dehydration reaction. Water is being formed. If we can separate the water from the rest of the reaction mixture, then the stress will be removing a product and our equilibrium will shift towards the products. And this idea of removing a product to drive a reaction to completion is incredibly important in the harbor process, the main industrial method by which ammonia is made. The equilibrium for the reaction of hydrogen and nitrogen to form ammonia lies heavily in favor of the reactants. And it is only through clever reactor design that we are able to produce meaningful amounts of ammonia. Now, when I say the equilibrium lies heavily in favor of the reactants, we actually have a numerical expression for that, the equilibrium constant. But that is a story for another day. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and if you have, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And if there is a topic you'd like to see covered in a future video, please put it down in the comment section below. Thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.